My name is Dr. Max Petrov, and I direct the Cosmos Group, hosted at the University of Auckland School of Medicine, New Zealand. Today, I'm going to talk about frequency of newly diagnosed diabetes after acute and critical disease. The question was addressed in our article in the May 2017 issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings, titled New Onset Diabetes After Acute and Critical Illness, a Systematic Review. This study was part of master's project of Chirag Jivanji, one of the students in my team and the first author on the Mayo Clinic Proceedings article. The article systematically reviewed all clinical studies reporting new onset diabetes after hospital discharge in acute and critically ill patients, and meta-analyzed data for more than 100,000 patients who had no diabetes before hospital admission, had in-hospital glucose concentration data available, and completed follow-up. Importantly, patients receiving any glucose-lowering medication during hospitalization were not included in the analysis. Further, all included patients received conventional treatment during hospitalization, and none of the studies included in our analysis were interventional. What we found first is that the crude pool prevalence of diabetes after acute and critical disease is 8%. And this finding in itself is rather unremarkable. This is because it's well in line with the International Diabetes Federation estimates, according to which the prevalence of diabetes in the general population in the Western world varies from 5 to 10 percent. In other words, on the surface, it looks like patients who survived acute or critical disease have a lifelong risk of developing diabetes similar to healthy individuals in the general population. However, our pre-specified subgroup analysis revealed for the first time in the published literature, but the risk of diabetes after acute and critical disease actually depends on the degree of in-hospital hyperglycemia. We categorized all patients into normal glycemia, mild hyperglycemia, and severe hyperglycemia groups, using the American Diabetes Association thresholds for diabetes and prediabetes, as shown in this figure. We found that patients in the normal glycemia group had a new onset diabetes prevalence of 4%, those in the mild hyperglycemia group, 12%, and patients in the severe hyperglycemia group, 28%. Notably, the difference between the three groups was statistically significant. And, of course, the 28% prevalence of new onset diabetes in the severe hyperglycemia group is strikingly higher than the 5 to 10% global prevalence of diabetes in adults. Overall, our findings suggest that in hospital hyperglycemia in patients with acute and critical illness is not benign and raises a number of clinical and research questions. For general insights, please download the full text article from the Mayo Clinic Proceedings website. To keep up to date on the latest leading research in metabolic dysregulations associated specifically with acute pancreatitis and disease of the exocrine pancreas, please follow publications of the Cosmos Group. For student research opportunities in my group or research collaborations, please get in touch by email. Thank you for listening to me today and enjoy reading our article in Mayo Clinic Proceedings. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.